I walked up the dim, dark, murky, dusty window of the stairwell. It was way too hot in there. I could feel my t-shirt sticking to my skin as I got higher and higher up the steps. The carpets were a strange, bland shade of blue, almost void of any brightness or colour. Like they were specifically designed to suck the energy out of the room. Thought about all the vivid, bright colours they could have been. It was just like every detail was in there to make me feel more uneasy. But I guess people don't go to places like that to look at the carpets. With every step on the cold, hard stairs, I could feel the air getting heavier and heavier. It was like something was pressing down on my chest and pushing on me, making it harder to breathe. I can imagine cutting through it like it was a thick fog. It's like I felt like I was walking into some dark, treacherous, unknown parallel universe. But I was just willingly wandering into it, I guess. So no, it was, it was just weird. I kind of felt like I was walking through a dream, but not a beautiful, euphoric, intense, lucid moment of clarity like very best dreams, but it wasn't like the pure, raw, cold, heavy terror of a true nightmare either. You know, the kind where you're waking up and you can't breathe and you're covered in cold sweats. It was more like one of those early morning, hazy hallucinations where you're not quite asleep yet not quite awake either. You almost feel like you don't even really exist. You feel like you're just kind of floating around this subconsciousness in this weird dead zone where no one can reach you in the dream world or the waking world. You're just kind of lingering between the two of them until you find a way to snap out of it. But it's hard to snap out of, you know, because you're too tired to wake up and throw yourself out of bed and splash your face with water and, you know, enter the waking world, but you're so restless and your mind's going everywhere that you can't quiet enough to go back to sleep. So you just kind of stay in between and wait for it to pass. That was how I felt walking up those stairs, but I knew I was awake and it wouldn't pass and I was going to have to open that little door at some point. As I grew up, the lines between daydreaming and reality became more blurred. I would always felt like I was wrestling between my subconsciousness and the real world. Felt like I was never truly present, I was never truly here and in reality. Whatever that meant. I could hear the fading hum of fluorescent strip lighting. It was kind of drilling into my head. It's kind of the only thing reminding me that I was actually there. That and the sweaty pins and needles sensation going down my arms. I was just climbing up and up that little stairway. I looked down. I thought I could just run. There was a little voice in my head just saying, run, just go, just run down the staircase, out into the street and never come back. Just, just run through this. But I figured that I shouldn't listen to that voice because I'd listened to it too much before. 
and it only really got me in trouble. And if I had got this far, then I might as well just take those last few steps and open that door. It was silly how nervous I was. I mean, people go to therapy all the time. I was just, it was just, just nerve wracking. That's the only way I can explain it. And running away into the dreamland of denial was what I'd always done. It was what I was best at, or at least what I was best at when I was in this hazy, weird state of mind. But then again, I was in that state of mind most of the time, and running away into my imagination was what I was always done. My imagination was my safe place, my place where anything was possible and nobody could reach me and nobody could harm me and I didn't have to slow myself down for the world around me or work out anything like that. I could just be me. I could just be myself and yeah, that was... That was why I liked it so much. I mean, when I was a kid, I put it down to just being a bit of a dreamer. I thought I just had a vivid imagination. But as I got older, things got more complicated and I wouldn't know how to pull myself out of my imagination into the real world or vice versa. Guess that's why I'd ended up here. Took one last look down at the stairwell and I was really tempted to run. I could feel my body and my ankles getting ready to just go for it, but I didn't. I thought if I made it this far, then I'm not gonna run away. Just yet, anyway. <laughs>